On stage is brought to you in part by Reggae Sun Fest, the return July 18th to 23rd, Montego Bay, St. James. Get your tickets at reggaesumfest.com and BRT Weekend at Atlantic City, July 15th to 17th. For tickets and info, visit brtweekend.com. Exclusive one-on-one -on -one with Sasha's boss, Horatia Hamilton, on his 18-year incarceration in the U.S. for marijuana trafficking. His plan to launch a game-changing talent business for Jamaica and the rest of the Caribbean, the return of Sashi, and more. When it was announced that Maka Diamond was part of Alkaline's New Rules lineup, some blatantly asked, what is she doing on it? But when it was over, Maka showed that diamonds never expire. All coming up, plus top stories making our stage this week. Welcome to the show, everyone. I am Winford Williams. We'll be right back. On stage with Winford Williams. On stage is brought to you in part by Reggae Sub Fest, the return. July 18th to 23rd, Montego Bay, St. James. Get your tickets at reggaesumfest.com. And BRT Weekend at Atlantic City, July 15th to 17th. For tickets and info, visit brtweekend.com. And now, top stories making our stage this week. Friday the 1st of July at the Randy Williams Entertainment Center. Two new sounds and two veterans at war. Musically, that is. It was the return of Guinness Sounds of Greatness dubbed back upon the street. Not in the greatness. I was excited and ecstatic to be back on the road and Guinness wanted to be the first brand to actually give back to the culture, sound clash culture. And we took the opportunity Last year or the year before rather, we normally do a parish to parish show, but because the industry just reopened, we were only able to do one show, so we decided why not do a big show where we have you know, the young selectors and then the legendary veteran selectors and also award selectors who have been in the business for years, represented Jamaica and even bring back revenue to Jamaica by you know, exposing our culture. First up on the battlefield, DJ Banka versus the girls DJ Shuckle Bus. In the end, though, an easy takedown by Banka, who was declared the winner. I'm feeling okay and I'm feeling happy, you know. As I said, Shaka Bus is a good friend of mine, and we just go out there and go have fun. This is not the first I'm representing for Guinness Sounds of Greatness. This is like my second time. So I have a, a little bit of experience and I feel like that gets the best of it. And for the clash of the titans, it was Pink Panther versus Ricky Trooper. In the first two rounds, Pink Panther had the edge. Trooper, take the hurly bean from now! But in the dub for dub round, a complete annihilation was handed down from Ricky Trooper. Before the announcement of the winner, Governor Live. Yeah, it's a great vibe in here, you know, um, Sound Clash. You don't know me there, I enjoy the Clash, Banka and Shuckle Bus and um, Ricky Trooper. And oh my God, nothing, I like R.I.P. Ping Panther, I'm not going to tell you, you're dead out there. 
Yes, get to me, I say. But it's a great vibe. I feel good for you know, so I perform. Because you know, so Guinea is like hardcore dancer, dance hall, you know? So, you know, we're there and they represent for Guinea and represent for Song Clash, represent for dance hall, is it? Judges ZJ Sparks, Delano of Renaissance, and Keith Walford of Bass Odyssey had quite the task to crown the winner. But it was decided that the clash was a tie which both men accepted humbly. As two icons in the base of me and Panta, we just can't give the people my show because they deserve a show because Corona and all of that, our pandemic, our pandemic, and you know, people are out, you know, and for Guinness kick off this, you know, I lift my heart to Guinness and I don't feel no way because the thing is, um, we always have strategy when we are clash, you know, me and, and Mataran and Fire Links and, 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 and Panta, we are some third round selector. And then the aim, I know that the road where, where, where Panther does work, he might come play more at the, at the regular songs. We, we could have done that. But we just say, okay, a, a, a sound clash, we more played hardcore like how sound clash is supposed to be. See? So that to do. And then I know say, when it comes to the tune for tune, he can't manage. There's no way he can't manage. And then never, if you read a book, you know, if you read a book, Starting our way slow. Or you watch a movie, you can't catch a movie now, Miguel, but at the end part, at the climax of the movie. So we, we, have just, we just finished Pana I. I do feel good. I really, really feel good about it. People came out early, people purchased Guinness. <laughs> they seen that they were entertained, and I really think the legendary selectors took it home tonight. And I look forward to being more creative next year, something excited and think, thinking out the box. Um, so it will be different but it will definitely still be representing dancehall. And on Saturday, July 2nd, it was all about Alkaline's new rules. Logistical issues and no-shows from Intense and Elephant Man notwithstanding, a bumper crowd which is said to outperform 2017's 20,000 packed the stadium parking lot. Almost all acts gave memorable performances, with females like Pretty Pretty, Marcy Chin and Stock Ashley showing that females in dancehall can hold a crowd. Idonia showing great maturity with an immaculate performance. Alkaline delivering all his fans expected and more. No one who came to see him left disappointed. In the end, it was moments created by Maka Diamond. <laughs> and Skeng. That most walked away replaying in their minds. Alkaline's new rules not perfect, but a step above its first staging. Now, as many flock the North Coast for Dream Weekend and other events this Emancipence period, the island's sexiest resort is offering Jamaicans a special invitation to their property. We're talking about hedonism too in Negril. And we're joined now by the resort's sales and marketing manager, Tatiana Ansa, right now, right here on our stage. Tatiana, welcome. Thank you so much for having me. Good to have you. Now, just jump in and unwrap the package for me. All right. Yes. So, the sexiest resort, love that. But let's face it, <laughs> hedonism is the sexiest place on earth. Uh, oh, okay. And <laughs> okay. I wanted to make it clear that this special is open to Jamaicans at Yard and Abroad. Yeah. Because the last time we had a special, the phone rang off the hook. There are people in New York and Fort Lauderdale. Hey, you know, I'm Jamaican. I have a Jamaican passport. I'm here for school or I'm here on a work for, <laughs> Like, can I come? Can I get the special? Yes, you can. If you are of us, then it is for you. Yes. Right? So what's the age, the lower limit for the age? You have to be legally an adult, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. as recognized by Jamaica, which means 18 years or older. 
mm -hmm. in order to participate. Um, we really won't check you in otherwise because you have to present an ID and 17-year-olds yeah. have tried it. Okay, so the, <laughs> the package now, the special that you're offering, the details okay. of that. The partnership between us and Dream is the reason why we had the special. And then looking at the fact that we're having two holiday weekends, the whole emancipence period, we said, you know what, let's just extend it. But it was really for Dream Weekend ticket holders to come in and um, stay with us. Hedonism is all inclusive. And for only 750 US dollars for two nights, two persons can come in and enjoy. And um, if you're staying for three nights, then, you know, it's 1100. Um, if you're staying beyond that, we'll extend the rate of 350 US per night per couple. Um, Given the nature of hedonism, mm -hmm. you may add a third person to your room oh. at a cost of 175 per night. Um, however, if three girls book one room, then the third girl is free. And I mean, you know how it goes with friends sharing a room. Nobody's really going to be free. You're just going to split the money three ways instead of two. What are you offering on the property in terms of entertainment? All right, well... Hedonism is a high energy entertainment space. The party never stops. I say it all the time that I don't go out in the grill because I work at the most exciting place in the whole town. Mm. So if I want to party, I go down to the disco or I go to one of the after parties. Um, we do have theme nights uh, every single day because you know how the dream weekend situation goes. There's a day party, there's a night party, but then the party fun, it doesn't have to stop when the party is over. You come onto the resort and specifically though, let me mention, there is almost always something to eat because, you know, after you're done party, yeah. sometimes you need to refuel before mm -hmm. you go out to another party or whatever the case may be. So while you are in the area, if you're staying at the resort, it's all inclusive unless it's probably 6 a.m. from 6 to 7.30. That's probably the only time you can't get something substantial outside of maybe coffee or tea mm -hmm. to eat. But back to the entertainment. Mm -hmm. So our entertainment manager, Winston, he's excellent. He has an amazing team of entertainers. They do shows on the stage every night. They have after parties. We um, are not going to be stopping any of our entertainment offerings. So the foam parties that we have, the globe pool party that we have, um, the fetish night party that we have, mm -hmm. all of those things are still going to be um, offered. So if you're staying there, it's just you'll be entertained on and off the property because let's face it, the dream team, they know how to throw a great party. So Negril is going to be going off. And I mean, if you want to keep it up, stay a hedonism. Well, my dear, they couldn't ask for a, a better, more expressive <laughs> sales and marketing <laughs> manager to sell this. I'm sold. <laughs> Good. You know I experience I mean? it every day and I, I want others to experience it uh, as well. All right. So we will be there. The, the stage will be there to capture some of it. What we can capture. <laughs> uh, we're going to talk about that. Closer to the time because, you know, uh, privacy is oh, yeah, something yeah. that's very important. No, the stage here. being there don't mean the cameras will be rolling. <laughs> okay. But we're just there. So we can say a few nice things about you. Yeah? Of course. Okay. All right, my dear, thank you so much for coming and sharing. Thank you for having me. And we look forward to you entertaining our fans from around the world who are watching. Some yeah. are now making plans to come. Good. And us. We should. At your property. We're looking forward to all of that and all the best. Thank you so much. All right. I can't wait to see everybody down there in the grill. Okay. So there you have her right there on our stage, Tatiana. And still to come, Maka Diamond shows that... Diamond never expires. And later, Sasha's boss reveals plans for game-changing talent business, chats his incarceration, and the return of Sasha. The effect all coming up. We will laugh. On Stage with Winford Williams. On Stage is brought to you in part by...
Reggae Sun Fest, the return, July 18th to 23rd, Montego Bay, St. James. Get your tickets at reggaesunfest.com. And BRT Weekend at Atlantic City, July 15th to 17th. For tickets and info, visit brtweekend.com. Now, when it was announced that Maka Diamond was part of Alkaline's new rules lineup, some blatantly asked, what is she doing on it? But when it was over, Maka Diamond showed that diamonds never expire. Right now, right here on our stage, Maka Diamond. <laughs> so, Diamond. Mm -hmm. Congratulations, first of all. Thank you. <laughs> but first, you know, how, how did you react to the trolling around your billy? I, I wasn't even looking. Once I really saw that this was real, and I'm a big up Vendetta, big up man himself and the whole team. I mean, trust me, when I realized I was on that show, I stopped looking at the internet, I didn't look at the internet anymore. No I was just preparing. Okay. So all people, just one or two friends have been saying, oh, Maka, they're saying, and I'm like, sure, whatever. <laughs> I wasn't even, I, I didn't put that on my mind, because the aim is to right now let Alkaline and his team proud. I'm going to go in front of these teenagers that they claim not going to like me, uh -huh. and I'm going to work. That is, was my focus. The moment I went on that flyer, mm -hmm. I said, this is my show. Yes. I am going to, I know, I said, Alkaline knew what he was doing. Thank you very much. You knew I needed this. And thank you. I mean, I must say, Lord, on stage um, tonight, Alkaline, I love him, I want to see if I hug him, I want to buy a gift, I want to know what I can do for pay for this. But when this show happened, it was the happiest moment in my life because this I knew, I knew I needed to show the world. Who never know me, me I go show them. Uh, Who know me, yes. <laughs> All right, pause for a second. Let's, let's show them <laughs> who don't know you. What, at what point of your performance you, you, you know, was the turning point to, to taking it, so to speak? Look, I don't know them. You want to pin call me? Yeah. Let me say No, no, no. Let me say it. Let me say it. I don't know them now. Wow! <laughs> Clapper! Oh, yes! <laughs> you own them after that. I was so you? proud of myself. Up to now, I'm proud of myself. This is the only performance I've ever watched of myself over and over and over a million times. Yes. Yes, and I'm so proud of myself because I said to God, I said, God, if I have one day left in my life, I have to show this world, say, me near Macadam and I'm. Uh, it, it's like they plant this thing in the people, them, even the newcomers, you know, about me and me they have to let the world and the newcomers see that everything that they were saying was wrong. It was just an a, a artist that get me, me fight and, 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 and my struggles and maybe me never to fight back at certain time. But me go and me do my own work and me say, all right, yeah, the struggle is over. Me understand what I go on. I saw the business said, dance all is a dog game. So Maka, it's either you just step up or you leave it. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like you, you enjoy the fight these days. You, you, because it, you but, say, but, bring it on. Because you say, we don't understand it. It's like they don't understand, say, when people now give up in their life because me can't dead for hungry. Me, nobody not pay my bills. They're saying, retire. I have never walked into um, the public service or the National um, Water Commission place and then put up, say, people of certain age is free, water is free, our light is free. So I have to work. And then I say, me not see no other job I can do. God bless me with my talent. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, this is what is paying my bills. Music always pay my bills. So I can't give up. So either I give up or I don't. One or the other, I choose not to. You understand? Because Macadam is the only one they're forcing to give up. They say, I'm going to say, everybody is doing it. All everybody is at a, any age, they're still artists, they're still doing their music. You know, I mean, I call them, people them know them, them see them, other females all over the world, they're still touring and doing them things. And them are big kids like me, them up in them age too. But it's just because they may make them, them career might take off in a certain time, um, 
after me, you know? So it's like everybody just throw down this old for me and it now show for me. And I just know, say, me not owe nobody nothing more than me just step on the buckle and the stone and them, them fling off of me. And I just prove myself that I'm wrong. And right now, diamonds are forever as well. You say, out of the blues, this young man himself, Alkaline, a stranger, come and said, and I'm going to put her on my show, his team members say yes, them keep meeting, and it, it, I didn't have a headache, I didn't even hear none of their team members saying, oh, my God, somebody else in there, they said they never want you on it, or it was mm -hmm. already ordained, and these people look at me and said they want me on them show, I have to show respect, I said enough love to alcohol, I'm not lying a hundred times, I'm going to say it right through this thing, right now I vend it, I'm a thing there. <laughs> okay. So where was your career before all of this? All over the same way I've been touring. Um, when I got the call for this show, I was just coming from Costa Rica. I, um, because, you know, I have a song in Costa Rica doing well. I have an upcoming one. The video also going to be dropping soon called Walk Off. And I've been doing my job the same way. Yeah. I've been doing my job, but the trolls were there, still on me, still on me. And they're trying to keep me away, you know, keep me away, suppress, you know. And, but I, keep, I was working. You know? Well, it sounds like you, you need not listen to them anymore. I never, I never said to myself, retirement is retirement. People don't decide that for you. My sacrifice is still out there doing it. And look how she looks nice and put on her clothes and she looks good. Somebody have to make a stand. These younger dancehall artists are going to thank me for this. You, if I give up, you, that means I make the people them win. There is something that has to make you yourself make up your mind that you want to just move on now but there's nothing else i see that i can do great than my dance all and my music i've gave up a lot for it when for the whole big year i may give up enough look enough enough life because i have 20 more kids you understand me up and have one child everything is all about music a lot of people don't know when we give up for this so at the end of the day god now i just sit down and make them win if you're working at the bank, anywhere you work, mm -hmm. there's always fight for people. Because I'm not one, but people feel like me. I say, I'm gonna say oh, I'm me, I, me alone already. No, it works everywhere. But at the end of the day, is if you're going to give up. All right. You understand? There's a new track, a new video right. for you that we have. Keep right. it up. The walk off. The walk off. Yeah. Let's take a piece of it right here. <laughs> hey, boy, give me. This is a diamond, no off rocket. Have you ever get a girl from Jamaica? And I no behavior. Hey boy, give me this I'm a cat diamond, me no off the rocket. Have you ever get a girl from Jamaica where walk off and I no behavior? Have you ever been to the tropics? We see how the island girls acrobatic. Them take it as a habit, keep blocking up the traffic. Them kind of wine make you go in your pocket. If your body in a bed, me we keep you. What's it? Big, me we treat you. Hey boy, you better understand me. No one only. It's a big grande, money Okay, so that's it. The brand new track from The Diamond. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Walk Off is the title. And <laughs> that's out and running, getting played. The song getting is played. In, in Costa Rica. You know, we control one different world over oh, there. So stuff. that's your market, one of, one of the... Yeah, definitely. You're one of them. Over. Right, and I'm heading to Panama soon too. Okay. So you don't know the Spanish... You know, it's a great thing. So Yay. it's getting the love and so on and things. So where do you go from here now? I'm in Canada. <laughs> and um, then I head to Panama, I have New York, and it goes on and it goes on and it goes on, you know? So the price gone up to? Oh, my God. <laughs> Yesterday's price? Okay. Not today's <laughs> price. Money up. <laughs> Money up. <laughs> okay. Janice Young must be smiling. <laughs> okay. But I told her, no. I yeah. said, Janice, after new rules, just look all the bookings them. We're you, gonna be You tear. told her? Oh yes, I told her. Oh I wow. told her I even I even got my paper and I wrote it down. I said, Macadiamond mashed up new rules, tear it apart, best show ever in the world. Such was the confidence you I, went to I with. wrote it down as I claimed it. I said, Yes, I I feel through. this. What do you mean? I couldn't make them laugh after Alkaline and them team. I'm not, no, sir, I would, I, I, it wouldn't happen. That will never happen. Uh. So we would sit down and we say, I mean, I, I just stayed home. I, you know what I did also? I left my phone. I didn't walk with a phone. I, I, I just stayed focused. And that was my aim. And, and I, I felt it. I, I felt a great joy. Right. It's not the first time I go amongst the youngsters. Them, you know? So I kind of understand them. I know they like the fun. They want the fun. You know? They yeah. want the fun, but we just know, them not ever get it. So right now, them see the real fun of dance hall and what it used to be. I'm glad to say, I get a chance to show them. Focus yes. is forever. Thank you. Maka Diamond. <laughs>
<laughs> it's forever. Forever. Uh -huh. And I want you guys to look out for my EP, Diamond in the Rough, coming out soon. I'm a brand new track, Dream Body. Check it out right now on my YouTube. And it's all about my team, Big Up on the Cell. Thanks. Thanks, we did a great job. Let me pick up my team too because, them, you know, the here and the this and everything and the motivation was there. So thank you on stage. You don't know, follow me on all social media platforms. I'm Michael Doshes. Thank you, Mark, for coming and sharing with us right here on our stage. And there you have her, Maka Diamond. And uh, still to come right here on our stage, our one-on-one -on -one exclusive with Sasha's boss. Horatio, I'm not talking. I don't want to miss that. On Stage with Winford Williams. On Stage is brought to you in part by... Reggae Subfest, The Return, July 18th to 23rd, Montego Bay, St. James. Get your tickets at reggaesumfest.com. And BRT Weekend at Atlantic City, July 15th to 17th. For tickets and info, visit brtweekend.com. After spending over 17 years behind bars in the U.S., Horatio Hamilton is not only picking up where he left off in 2002, the Jamaican is also launching what he calls a game-changing new entertainment business in the Jamaican space. Mr. Hamilton agrees to sit with us in South Beach, Florida. Romeo, sir. Listen, love. Mr. Thanks Winfrey. for having us, sir. Likewise. Why are you in good spirit? You're looking good. Um, so my first question to you is, what did you do to preserve yourself, sir? Um, work out six days a week, drink water only. And I'm talking about incarceration here, yes? Yeah. What year did you migrate to the U.S.? Um, December 88, 1988. What did you do for work? Well, from Jamaica, you know, I always been music, I was doing dance hall, promoting parties, mm -hmm. dance hall, different. And then um, come to America, I do the same thing. Before I even take it to the big stage like Sashi, I doing regular concerts. Okay, so you, the incarceration. You preserved yourself, but, but, and physically we see that. But your mind, your thinking, your mentality, how, what did you do to, uh, to preserve that? Uh, you know, just read a lot. And there was a time I think, you know how it is, Winfred, if I'm locked up in this room with, say, just you and your crew, we're going to talk about the same thing over and over and over. Yes. So it, it's like we're losing out. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Our mental capacity is shrinking. Mm -hmm. And I realized that for real. So like with phone numbers, I never used to use like these smartphones where you store everything. I, I realized now I was losing numbers. I have to look for numbers, so I just, just stop writing down things mm -hmm. and force myself to remember things. You see what I'm saying? Because for years and years, I was around the same set of people doing the same things. So I realized I've been forgetting things. So I start wondering, is it that I'm getting old or mm -hmm. I start getting senile or something, you know? I'm losing my memory. But it wasn't. It's just that I was dealing with the same set of people over and over every day for years. So the brain is preserved, and, and in fact, you, you took time to educate yourself, it appears. Yeah. Because in our pre-talk, you were telling me about your, uh, some deep things about the business of entertainment, the global entertainment space, and some deep-rooted uh, principles around how it works, uh, the business. And, and you were able to, to assess um, Jamaica's music and the, 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 the reason why we're sort of stagnant. We're not growing as much as we can and should. Are those some of the things you've added to, to that learning? Yeah. From loving the business and I always try to 
bring the things that is happening in America to Jamaica, right? Okay, if you watch my show, I always try to do things that we're not getting in Jamaica, but it's in America elsewhere. I always try to bring that to Jamaica. Mm -hmm. So um, I stay with getting Billboard's um, magazine for, right, every week. I used to get Billboard magazine and I watch the business. I watch, I study every promoter. And I know AEG, Live Nation, the two biggest. Mm -hmm. I watch how they change, change the game, start signing people, yeah. like how they sign record deals. And I watch how they technically force the small mom and pops guys away from the business. You can't compete, including myself. But it's a business I love. So, but it didn't discourage me. Mm -hmm. It just let me try to figure out a way how to still fit in because there was always a way. Before I got incarcerated, AG Live Nation was simple dealing with promotions. All they did was promotion and own venues and pro promote concert. Then they change it. You see where I'm coming from? They change it where in AG Live Nation bought Ticketmaster, then they bought Clear Channel. Clear Channel, you know about Clear Channel. That is the biggest radio station in America, own all the AM station, FM station, all the major um, cities. And then they've bought a couple of management companies, so they have everything. So now they start signing artists, like how oh, they sign record deal. So they sign a Jay-Z. Jay-Z only doing shows for, for a live nation. Beyonce, even though she have her own, what's it called, Parkwood, it's still on the, her concerts, it's still on the Live Nation. You see what I'm saying? When the Live Nation partner up with Jay-Z, not just to do concert, but to do Rock Nation and to do an agency, now Rock Nation start signing and bringing all these people on the Live Nation. Mm -hmm. So even with the small urban artists, I can't afford them like before. Is that what gave birth to the idea of you now starting this new business that is a game changer, as you called it. Yeah, from, I was forced to, I had no choice. It's like, because I'm not gonna stop doing promotion. I'm not gonna stop loving music. I look at the region and the market that was left vacant. Mm -hmm. And the market and region that really left vacant is the Caribbean. Let me give you an example. If you, what it would cost to, to put a, a concert together with, like, say, a Jay-Z, a Beyonce, or whatever, just the artist fee, I could take that same money, right, and do a Caribbean concert in the same arena, say stadium, and pull the same amount of people. But these guys just don't understand it, or they don't get to it as it. But I'm sure, I'm sure that AG been in Jamaica, I'm sure that Live Nation been in Jamaica. They're looking. They're, they're looking. Jamaica. Because they're artists right now that is on the Live Nation. Mm -hmm. Bujabantin on the Live Nation. Um, dudes like, even Popcorn, I think, I'm not 100% sure, is Live Nation looking into our still trying to work something out to get them back to tour for them in the US. Oh, this game changer though, what exactly is it? My thing is doing my own agency mm -hmm. in the Caribbean, it's called CTA, Caribbean Talent Agency. It has to do with, not just with entertainers or musicians, it got to do with everything, whether you're an actor, you're an actress, you're a model, you're a promoter, you're a fashion designer, sports, everything, we're into it. So I want everything under the same umbrella because there's nothing like that in the Caribbean, in the world. The two biggest agency is um, William Morris and CAA, right? They cover everything. If CAA or William Morris sign Winfred right now, they already have enough people, corporate people, under their umbrella, so they could give you endorsement deals that you could never get. So that's the kind of thing I'm trying to put together. I'm trying to put together wherein I have enough promoters. You understand? Owning their things. I'm not trying to own our partner up with these guys, but I'm trying to set it in a way where these guys could see as a movement, as a group, you spend less money and make more. Because when a Jamaican artist leave and go to travel, jump on a plane, when they come to the US, when they go to Canada, they go to um, Europe, they say they go on a tour. 
They're not touring, Winfrey. They do some spot dates. So I really want to set it up where I have promoters, right, in every region, where if I take a bounty killer or a beaner man and say, okay, I could say, okay, I needed to do six months, needed to do three months. You understand what I'm saying? For X amount of money, you're up front. That you money is guaranteed. Guaranteed money. Up front money. Suppose that the tour is losing money. Where does that leave the artists? Do they still keep the money that you're up front? Yeah, because there's nothing. It's like you decide to do a, throw a party. Mm. It, whether or not the party is successful, it's a, you know the, artist the artist is, is already paid. You yeah. see what I'm saying? So, but the difference is now is the risk. Yes. It's less risk. Because when it's a big difference with paying an artist for one show mm -hmm. than paying an artist for 30 shows. Because now you don't pay per show. You mm -hmm. pay for the entire tour. Okay. You understand? This, if you don't take that money, it wouldn't fit. Don't accept it. Because you feel like you can get 50,000 a show. Which in, you can. But how much of those 50,000 shows is going to get within three months? Okay. Or within so six months? Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? And it's less risk for the promoter. Okay. So it's a win-win for both? For everybody. Right. You see what I'm saying? So that is the essence of what you want to establish? Right. I want it to, our culture, our people, to not just be regular. I want us to be like, what's the difference between them and the Americans? Why can't we get be handled and treated like them? You know what I'm saying? And it's, I think one of the main reasons is because we always run to them. Mm -hmm. And we want to be like them. Right now, Billboard magazine don't have the take the eliminate reggae from Billboard magazine and put Afrobeat. They say it's not a replacement. Like they say it's not, but it is. Afrobeat had reached a, a, a place where they had to take it because it was burning up the world. But you didn't have to remove reggae. You could add Afrobeat. They, they have to. <laughs> that is like when Beanie Man and Bunty yeah. did Versus. Before Beanie and Bunty, right? Versus was like one guy in California, one, one in South Beach, and they doing whatever. It wasn't. Bunty and Beanie is the first duo to bring it back to original, like original dance or clash. It was the most viewed mm -hmm. ever. It set history, right? Mm -hmm. And it gave them an idea to start a new format. Billboard magazine, the same Billboard magazine, did a tribute to Versus and congrat everybody except Bounty and Beanie. Mm. Think about it. Why, is it they, why do they do it? And because I think in America, reggae don't sell as much as it's elsewhere. And, but um, reggae in America is a big movement. Because it is a question I ask myself too, because uh, reggae is like this, right? You say a reggae show with 10,000, 20,000 people, right? And everybody's singing the songs. So where's the record sale to match it? Yes. They know the songs, they know all it. But why the, rec the sales is not there? I could cite a number of things, but, but yeah. we, we won't have time to go into all of it. <laughs> But, but, okay, so when do you kick off this agency? The agencies technically start July, mm -hmm. you know? Based where? In the U.S., because I'm in the U.S. for now, you know? Mm -hmm. I can't travel for about another year. I'm starting with what year in the U.S. with a small tour. And you'll be seeking to sign persons across the spectrum of music, sport, and other forms of entertainment and culture? Yeah. Apart from taking them on shows and signing them and making sure that these shows are properly organized, are there anything else that you are prepared to do for, for them in terms of lifting their game, lifting their profile, training, those things? Any, any, yeah, anything as, as an agency, you're supposed to develop your artists, or the, the, your, your talent, mm -hmm. develop them. We're gonna also provide that. Okay. People, young talent get developed because if you watch the way, I don't want it to sort of stick to entertainment, but let's mm -hmm. stay there right now, right? You watch our artists performing nowadays. You, I feel sorry for a lot of them, for real, because most of them don't sound, you like the record, right? 
But when you go to a concert, you get something different. Yeah. The band play different. It's, the artists give you 30 seconds and pull up and go to something else. I pay to hear my favorite song. And you give me 30 seconds. You know what I'm saying? And I remember artists used to dress to go on shows. Look, and seriously, Winfrey. I'm looking to have other Caribbean people are, who can dress you, who, because they what? I'm a designer, I'm a stylist. I'm a, you understand what I'm saying? So everything's supposed to be on the, the agency. Everybody piggyback off of each other. So the agency is a full service agency. Just like there's no, I want it to be, there's no difference between CTA or a William Morris or a CAA. Mm -hmm. And Sashi? Yes. There will be Sash in it summer, but there's a but. Mm -hmm. The but is where? It will be next summer. But not necessarily in Jamaica, you're it's, saying? It will be in the Caribbean. You saw it? Oh. It will be in the Caribbean. You've been saying a lot of Caribbean, Caribbean. Caribbean, yeah. Jamaica did hurt you, didn't it? Back when you were doing Sashi. I, I don't say that hurt. I was disappointed by a lot of people action. But looking back at it, sometimes I question myself, by asking myself, is it my action that let these people react? So is it a reaction of who, the way I was acting or behaving? Why, see, the last interview I ever did was with you, remember? And I talk about the Minister of Tourism and all of them, right? But now that my, my views are different, my actions, the way I see things are different, I'm open to talking to them. I'm open to see where we could go. Me, I'd love to do everything in Jamaica. Okay. But at the same time, if it's not making sense, I'm not going to. I'm not going to say where, because, but I have other island. I have one island that really interested me, not say Sashi, but in me the, 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 doing, doing show, um, yeah. not sure, multiple things there. Multiple things for next year. Yeah. Oh, I said to me, yeah, because it's a big puller of tourists to any destination. If one knows how to do safe and 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 high standard events, so and they, they probably they know about you. Obviously, they have a, a track record, so that is not too bad. Still to come, Arisha opens up about his incarceration. I was arrested and prosecuted for marijuana conspiracy and tells how he intends to get his due reward for the price paid for the week. On Stage with Winford Williams. On Stage is brought to you in part by... Reggae Subfest, The Return. July 18th to 23rd, Montego Bay, St. James. Get your tickets at reggaesumfest.com. And BRT Weekend at Atlantic City, July 15th to 17th. For tickets and info, visit brtweekend.com. to your, your incarceration. Um, but what would you say to people who want to know, where are you now in regards to what caused you to be incarcerated and, and where you're going? Because you, you spoke of being a different person now. What, what can you tell us about that? Um, then, <clears throat> it's simple. I was arrested and prosecuted for marijuana conspiracy, mm -hmm. right? Back then, in the world, marijuana was illegal. So with me being involved with marijuana, I was doing something illegal and I got arrested for it, did my time. Even though now, everywhere in the world, marijuana is legal. The same people who arrest me and charge me, some of them selling it now, but they're not breaking the law. So then I wasn't, because the law, it wasn't the law, then the law changed now. So it, nothing, I have no ill will, no bad feelings about it. It's just what it is. I brought the law, I did my time, it's it. Okay. You know? So, but is it a business? Now it's a business. It's it is. Legal. Is, a, is, is it a business that you'll be looking, that you're I'm looking trying. at? I'm, I'm, of course, after. 
I am trying, but this time I'm, I need my license, like, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because it is one of the biggest business. Take, for instance, I could give you numbers about America, because I know more about America as I live here. Mm -hmm. um, back in the days, um, a lot of states used to use the cigarette company, the taxes from the cigarette, to pay, to balance the budget. They run it away, you understand? They go to China and India. Now, it's marijuana. It's just that it's not legally federal yet, but in the states, most of these states, it's legal like in 40 something states. Mm -hmm. For medicinal use, it's legal from, I think in the 10 or 12 states in the US for recreational use. You know, it's legal. I came home everywhere, even regular. You go to Manhattan, they have trucks, like food trucks, weed trucks, Mark, mm -hmm. selling le weed legally, you know? Yeah. Whoa. And so it's, you're not taking your eyes off that either. No, because it's a big business. It's even in Jamaica. People yeah. used to come to Jamaica, right? Tourists used to come to Jamaica to what? To be on the beach getting high off weed. Mm -hmm. You know, people always think, before you and I was born, people think foreigners, tourists think weed was legal in Jamaica. Yeah. Everybody who was know that weed wasn't weed Thanks in Jamaica. Right? Yeah. yeah, but the rest of them, even, <laughs> boy, I don't even know why you talk about the rest of mm -hmm. because I think even the rest of in Jamaica right now getting, is so treated, treated so badly because these guys did just like me, even though they might, some of them like, don't do the same amount of time. But these guys, I watched as a kid growing up for smoking a split. I never smoked, but I watched these guys get beaten by police. I so get you would never use a, 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 a... Never smoke. Of, of ganja. <laughs> I never smoke a cigarette, never smoke weed, and, yeah, never. Oh. Only in taxi, never going, my body is alcohol. So you think wrestlers were treated, are treated? Right now, yeah. Right now they're treated bad. Yeah, because the government should look out for these guys who revolutionize certain things in like the weed in Jamaica, what let people like the Bob Marley, the Peter Tash, the life they portray because of the weed that all these people like. White people or whatever want to feel as close as possible to our culture, which was who exposed our culture, the Bob Marley and them, right? Mm -hmm. So they used to come to Jamaica to mess with a dread, they rent a dread, we'll get some weed, and it's true. Yeah, everybody know about it. It closes even if they don't come for the weed, to smoke the weed, to hang out with some dread and whatever. Now weed, after the dread, them get persecuted, persecuted killed, so long, killed. and chastised, mm -hmm. so and beaten, mm -hmm. physically beaten. Now it's legal, and they're not reaping the benefits. Yeah. I would even talk about the people who is reaping the benefits. I'm not saying everybody shouldn't try if they can, but I have some. I feel like the dread, all these dreadlocks, Rastafari in Jamaica should be getting some form of compensation. Yes. I totally agree with that. For what they've been through, for this weed, that they have preserved, they cultivated, they, they promoted, to the point now where it's now green gold. I'm disappointed that they're not standing up for themselves. I'm very disappointed. I think their, their approach is, you know, wrestlers are peaceful people. By nature, they are not people who want to be confrontational. Yeah, but can I say something? But they're but, doing serious work in lobbying legal work to you. Know, Rasta is not as as passive as it seems. But, but, but I hear you, I hear you, I take your point. Like, Muslims are very peaceful people. But they stand up for what they believe in. <laughs> Maybe too much. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm, I'm just saying. <laughs> no, but you see, why you said too much is because of what these the Western Hemisphere teach us. I try to, you know. Yeah. But standing up for your rights, Winsfield. If somebody come in your yard and violate your rules, yes. you'll do. You know, it's not. And the only I, thing Rasta Rasta has never. The reason why weed. We survived, right? Because Rastafari was standing up by 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 promoting the weed, by by seeing and and put themselves. They became outcasts in Jamaica for the same weed too, and and they didn't care how you feel about them. They were defending it. You can't ask for more. That they didn't apply badness and, and violence. Right. We can't, they stood we can't up say, uh, we right can't then. Say they didn't so why do they not? Have to do?
Like the, what they have done already, but big man, is is enough to 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 to, to reward them, to compensate them, and to and forever we shall be grateful to Rastafari. Right? Because they have done their part. The rest of us who are all going to benefit from it should now reward Rastafari and we take up the man, the mantle, just like you are doing. You pay too. Okay, you pay. But so the rest of us must go now and fight for the weed and get something out of it. I am not saying Rasta for fight. Rasta, no. I don't, they don't have to. They have done enough fighting for this. They preserved it and brought it here. And that's why Jamaica is positioned the way it is. Your pain is different from reward. <laughs> they pay. And oh, they pay. <laughs> no, they, they, they pay. pay with their lives. They pay with their life, the abuse, physical abuse. But where's the reward? The, the, they're not being rewarded. Rastafari is burning the fire, same way. The fire no out. Yeah, but I'm yeah. talking about that, Winfield. I'm talking about why they're not being rewarded and other people they're reaping they're, the they're benefits. They're not demanding things with attack. What, to but, about. Not me and you. Them need to stand up for themselves. The man they want to run things is who we must take on now. That's what I'm say. You pay through yeah. incarceration for the thing now that even this country, this US, this United States is mm. calling green gold. Yeah. I remember a former speaker I was calling it green gold and calling a seminar and making money off of just telling people they can get a piece of the, the, the pie, the, the green gold pie. And if, if you understand, Rasta must have inspired you, you know, because the, the product that put you in trouble is a Rasta product. Would you yeah. agree? Yeah, and that's why I'm talking up for them right now. <laughs> yes, but uh, so, so, no, that's why, and that's why, why I'm No, I have to pressure, because you can't let these people sit back and think that, hey, it's like Bob Marley tell you, most guys going to wait on great God from come from up above and make them feel all right. You, if you're not going to sit there, like some people sit and pray to God mm -hmm. and think God going to help you, God don't help people like that. God help you when you make a plan, you come up and you you start it, so God guide you. You're not going to sit and God going to come drop a blueprint in you. Know. So what would you want to see Rasta do? Do you have any suggestion of, about how they should go about fighting? They have to be louder. Rights. They have to be louder. Those rights? They got to be, they're too quiet. For, Make noise? Yeah, demonstrate. But Rasta, Rastafari is always, it's always militant and always. But the militants are not working though. If, if, I, I, it's, it's like. Through the music. But listen, what I'm the saying. Music the, is, the music. Everything changed. Rasta, reggae is Rasta, Rasta is listen, reggae. Listen, everything so changed. The music, everything in reggae. Listen, is, is, everything, changed. Rasta, everything changed. Right? Everything changed. Everything <laughs> changed. Win, <laughs> Winfred, 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 right now I'm doing it. I'm doing it. I'm not pressuring them. I'm trying to tell them do something. <laughs> I'm not pressuring them. Listen, right now, I, yeah. I came out. I, I came out, right? Yeah. Last year in November. Mm. I wish I had it. I could let it hear. I have like nine or ten songs finished. It's, and every song is about ganja. Is there, I'm doing a compilation album called Ganja and Reggae. <laughs> okay. I'm going to let you hear the first single. <laughs> See, for real. No, you're doing it again. Ganja and no. reggae. Oh, yeah. no. we, we, have, <laughs> we, we celebrate you, sir. We, are, we, are, we, we encourage you. We, we are impressed with your, 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 um, your tenacity, your boldness. You accept your, your, your missteps and what you're not giving up. And you're doing your part. All I'm begging you to do. Leave Rasta alone. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know how you let the Rasta on them feel like they're fighting. No, they, I don't. I don't, I don't, I don't no, no, I just, and yet Rasta don't, don't think like that. Rasta is hearing you clearly. You know? yeah. And they can, they will make, make up it, their mind uh, Let me ask you. I'm not saying everybody should make money off mm. this thing. I'm not saying, because the yeah. money is enough money. Yes. But I don't think, I don't know how many dispensaries in Kingston are, you understand? Uh, let's say Kingston. You understand? Because I ain't going to say in the con in the island. But how many of these dispensaries in Kingston owned by Rastas? Leave out the Marley. But I, I really haven't done any kind of analysis. Because the only, Rasta, ownership. the only Rasta I see benefit from now, which I, I, I love all the move. I have so much respect for these Marleys. A lot of people talk about the father, legacy, legacy. A lot of parents die, and the kids not smart enough to carry on the legacy. I have so much. The, the Marley's kids, the grandkids, they're all doing. And you can't say, they're living off the parents, the Marley name, 
you can't just lay back, just like yeah. when I say, and wait, because they're doers. Of, they're yeah. doers. And, yeah. they, and I respect them. Yeah. I, re- I honestly respect they're, these. They're they're, that's, 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 no, that's, that's, a, no, but that's what I'm saying. They are the only one. I see yeah. as Rasta where I could say, okay, they, you know, because Bob get arrested so much all over the world yeah. for, for weed. You know what I'm saying? Rachel, Rasta <laughs> is passive aggressive. <laughs> they are, they're there. They've been fighting uh, when they were asleep. That's true. They have yeah. never, ever relented. Rastafari, when mm. it comes to ganja and the rights of, of, uh, of, 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 of this Africa. This is what I'm going to do. I'm helping Rasta. Yeah. I have an album coming out called Ganja and Reggae. Yes, yeah, November 4th. Cool. November, exciting November 4th. Every song is about ganja. Yeah. Not marijuana. So you're owning the name Ganja. I own it. You I, own it? I own I registered the not ganja by itself, but ganja and reggae. Because that's what Jamaica was known for. Okay. You see what I'm saying? So good. So I own Ganja Reggae. I have an album coming out. So no, nobody has can use that as a business. I, as a business no, business. they can't. If they can use it, they're gonna, they're, they're, yeah, they're going to pay me. If they use the two of them together, they're going to pay me. Oh, really? Yeah. So I'll say That's that. That's interesting. I have an album coming out called Ganja and Reggae, right? And then I have a tour starting November 4th called Ganja and Reggae. But is it, wasn't it Rastafari who called it Ganja? Who Jamaica, I don't know. But it's, I, I raised in Jamaica, born and raised and hear the word Ganja. And I know Jamaica use the term Ganja to... The upper class Jamaican is a very derogatory term. Yan, but no, look, ganja. Ganja. Yeah. You understand? That's why I keep it like that. Ganja. Because but now. I, I think it's a great name. It's so, a great thing you've done. So I, I, you, I have cel- celebrity friends where I tell about the, my ideas and stuff, I'm, and I love it so much. They want we own the name, they start using the name too. They start using the ganja name. So you're going to be licensing the name for use? I already licensed the two together, ganja and reggae. Yes, but if a man yes, has a license to uh, use your name. To use the ganja and reggae, it? yeah. Oh, you use reggae to, to, to differentiate between the generic term ganja. To, to, to say ganja and reggae and reggae and ganja. Because you have some slick oh, yeah, people. Yes, <laughs> yes. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> you got some very slick people. Yes, yes. You, you know? try to get one. Yeah. yeah. My tour starts November 4th in Brooklyn. Uh-huh. And I'm going to go Colorado, California, Nevada, Oregon, Washington State, Detroit, uh, Michigan, uh, New Jersey, New York, Massachusetts. It can be sponsored only by these marijuana companies. They call it marijuana in America, but we Jamaican say So you're getting sponsors from the legal yeah. distributors? Yeah, in America. In America? Yeah. Ratio. <laughs> a long chat, man, but, but that lot said. <laughs> no we'll said. Again, Lots of food for thought, sir. We look forward to your big projects coming forward and stimulating some excitement in the space with an aim to lift the standard of our music and the business off, which unfortunately most of us not into or, or understand that we need to be into if we really, really want success in the business of music in particular. So your agency is welcome, sir. We look forward to that. Yeah, and I look forward to working with everybody, not just in entertainment, you know, yes. but in once you have talent and you're in the Caribbean, you want to under the umbrella because we want to piggyback off each other, you know? Okay. We just don't want it to be me making some money or this promoter. I just entertain us, making money. You understand? Too long, a little guy out there who can fashion designer and a girl who is, could be a supermodel, you know, or some, you don't mm. know, painter. We want everybody to well, have talent. Well, if your Sashi project is anything to go by, sir, we know you're very serious. And we know that it will be big and bold. What stands again? again? See always, you always good to chat with you, Bridging. You complain, you complain to us. And so that's it. Horatio Hamilton. No holds barred here. All right, so there you have him. Horatio Hamilton. A lot to process, right? And that's our show for this week. Winford Williams, on behalf of all of us, thanking you for joining us. Do join us again next week for more On Stage.
Thanks for watching our video. Please click subscribe and be on our stage anywhere, anytime, always.